Hey guys, I'm working on a powered speaker, amplified speaker. And uh, I'm using the LM386 chip. And you might be saying, what are you, a hypocrite? You just did a video about how good the TDA7267 is. Why am I using the LM386? Well, this speaker I'm going to use the little 9 volt batteries. Yeah, it would be better to use a larger battery, but... You, know, you can go to the dollar store and buy alkaline 9 volts for a buck. And you should be able to get 4 or 5 hours of listening, uh, good listening from it. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a small speaker. It's not going to be super powerful or loud. So I'm just using the LM386. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we'll get some good battery life out of it. Okay, quick look at the circuit here. Now, I'm using my Walkman here as an input. Now, I'm mixing the two signals together to combine it to mono. You just can't short those together because you're actually shorting out the left and right channels when you short them together like that. And, you know, that can cause problems. And I um, also have this resistor here which is it just lowers the input impedance because if you unplug it you might get a humming sound because the amplifiers internal impedance is pretty high so for use with these uh, you know Walkmans and uh, music players and things uh, this is this will work just fine and I'm setting the gain using a, a 10 microfarad in one uh, kilo ohm resistor because uh, I, I found the gain using that combination is just right for the music players headphone stereo type things and up here this is just an LED now I didn't want the LED to draw a lot of power because again using 9 volt batteries and uh, what I did I used a very efficient LED 10K resistor, very low current, um, probably less than one milliamp. Well, it will be less than one milliamp. It'll be like uh, uh, six tenths of a milliamp or 600 microamps. So that's not really going to draw on the battery. And uh, the rest of it's just... Uh, the typical LM386 circuit. Okay, let's take a look of what I've got so far. Okay, the purpose of the speaker is, um, well, on the weekends, I go up and swim at my brother's house, and we just wanted a uh, very basic little uh, speaker so we can have some music in the background. I have this big speaker here. But I have to plug in external amps and power supply, and it's kind of overkill for that. So I just have this little box here, which is 10 by 7 by 7, I think it is. In the back here, this is actually the bottom. I'm going to have a, a board, which I'll show you, that'll fit on there. And, of course, the speaker in the front. And I have this, this speaker here. It's not in the best of shape. It's got a little hole, but it's free, and this is going to be a sealed box. If you want decent bass from a sealed box, you got to find a speaker with the free air resonance as low as possible. And for five and a quarter inch, this thing is 55 hertz. That's not bad. I mean, it's not super low or anything, but you know, again, this this is not. We're not looking for hi-fi here, and. Uh, I put, uh, I primered it and put two coats of acrylic semi-gloss latex and I painted it white because, you know, it's out in the sun, it's going to get steaming hot, so if you paint it white, it just reflects away the heat, and, you know, well, not really, really reflects away the heat, but it doesn't absorb the light and convert it to heat, so, you know, it doesn't get real hot. Here's the circuit layout I used on one of those perf boards using the LM386. Looking from the top, 
And if you want this schematic, or, or this actually, this layout, uh, just pause the video. And uh, here's the actual circuit. I did add a, well, it's upside down, but I did add another capacitor across the power supply. That resistor there, right here, that's for the indicator light. That's not shown here. And this is a very good layout because I have the power grounds over here separated from the signal grounds. But uh, yeah, this thing's all built and tested. Not too much bodgery going on, as Dave would say on EEV blog. But hey, it's good enough for what I need. And uh, here is the board I made that's going to mount to the back of that speaker. Made a little slot for the 9 volt battery. Got the, the switch, the LED and signal put in. This thing will mount right on the back and just hot glue it right on there. I'll trim down these wires and get it all soldered up. And uh, get that mounted and the uh, thing will be done. Well, before I button this thing up, here's all the wires connected. Put the battery in, put some foam in there. Now I need to drill and tap some holes and make a little battery cover, so I'll do that. And you can see thing turns on. So I'll uh, put some foam around this edge here so it, you know, that doesn't vibrate or leak. I countersunk the holes. So I'll get this thing put in and cleaned up. All finished. Made a little clear battery door. I like to find the little thumb screws like that are on the back of a computer case. So I don't need a screwdriver to open this. So how it works, you know, this comes out, this swings open, you can change the battery. And power switch. Uh, I'm just using a heavy duty battery. You get two of them to a pack for a buck. However, I'd, I'm going to go out and buy some alkalines because they probably work a lot better that way. And I have the uh, music player plugged in. I was thinking of making like a mount for the music player. But you need a like a three foot cord because this has an FM radio and it uses that as the antenna. So you need a, a decent distance. So I got the uh, speaker mounted in the front here. This has like a coating on it, so it's uh, resistant to water. So no problem there. And it's just something I had laying around. Okay, let's uh, give it a listen. Okay, you might notice a little crackle. That's that's in, actually in the music. They put like a fake record clicky sound. So it's not the amplifier. It sounds just fine. Surprisingly, there's a little bit of bass in there. So very good. Hopefully I don't get a copyright strike on that. I did get, you know, matched uh, copyrighted content or whatever it's called. It was from Gemendo. Music I downloaded is supposed to be free to use. Uh, it was in my uh, tube preamp video. I noticed I'm getting a, a, a notice on that. That's crazy. But anyway, so I got a little speaker for the pool. When we're done, just throw it in the pool shed and get it out next time we go swimming. And, uh, yeah, it's a pretty neat little project. Thanks for watching.